Do you have a small space and want to grow as many tomatoes as you can? Or do you have a bigger space and you want to get a massive harvest? Well, it's easier than you think. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. And today, I'm going to show you how to grow more tomatoes in less space. The basic idea is simple. It's to grow up, not out. Tomatoes have this habit of just sprawling, and so if you let them grow, they will take over. That's why a lot of these tomatoes are suggested to have a lot of space. The seed packet for this black creme says to space these plants two to three feet apart because it's going to sprawl. It's going to grow wide. But if you can control the growth to go up vertically, you can actually put more plants closer together. I'm spacing my plants 18 to 24 inches apart, much closer than recommended, and I'm using a trellis to grow vertically. You only need a few things to make this happen so that you can take control over your tomatoes instead of your tomatoes taking control over you. The first, is a roll of twine, and this is nylon twine. You can use any type of string that you want, but the nylon is very strong and it'll last for multiple seasons. I have a set of pruners to cut off some of the branches that I don't need as I shape my plant. And then I have a bag of tomato clips, and these are a wonderful invention. It's just a little circle that goes around the twine to hold the plant to the twine. And I've already started with this black crim. I'll tie the twine to my trellis, and then using the tomato clips, I'll connect the plant. I've already pruned these other tomatoes, and now it's time to prune this black crim. This is the plant that I grew from seed as part of the single seed challenge. It's doing quite well, even after being pummeled by hail a few weeks ago. And what I want to do is train it to grow up to this trellis. And then I will connect it to the trellis. Right now it's starting to sprawl. There's a lot of branches. Black Crim is known for this. It has suckers on top of suckers. And it will take over a very large space. But if I can train it up to this trellis, now as it spreads out, I can give it lots of support. And the vertical growing is a good idea for a number of reasons. First, to take control over the plant. But tomatoes are very susceptible to a lot of soil-borne diseases. And so what happens is when it sprawls and the leaves are touching the ground, well, there's a lot of bacteria and fungi that can infect the plant. But if we can trim off a lot of these lower branches and grow vertically, then the plant is less susceptible to be infected. This technique of pruning off the lower branches and then training the plant vertically up against a trellis works for indeterminate tomatoes. Those are the vining tomatoes that just keep growing and growing. I do not recommend this method for determinate tomatoes. Those are the kind of tomatoes that get bushy. And those should be allowed to sprawl, and they should be allowed to let the suckers grow. I'm going to be pruning off a lot of the suckers on this plant and all of the others. An indeterminate plant will continue to send out suckers. That's why I can cut it drastically, and it will continue to grow. I'll start by inspecting the plant. Just trying to get a feel for what I'm working with. Branches, suckers, leaves. And I've got one twine already, but it's not actually supporting the main stem. So as I look at the plant, this piece right here is the biggest and the strongest. And I'm going to actually make this the main stem. Now, the reason I say make this the main stem, because this other piece was originally a main stem, but it looks like one of the suckers has really taken over and is growing quite strong. So I'm going to take a tomato clip 
and support this piece while I look at the rest. You have different types of growth on a tomato plant. The thing to look for is the stem, a leaf branch, and then a sucker. And the suckers really can take over. This was that main stem that I originally had the twine on, but it got damaged pretty severely by the hail. Well, it looks like this is in the, between the junction of a leaf and what is now the main stem. But in actuality, if I turn the plant, you can see that this is a leaf branch. This was the main stem. And so now this really strong piece that I'm actually letting grow was a sucker. But this sucker has grown much stronger than the main stem that was originally in place. I know this can be confusing when a sucker is now the main stem and the main stem is now smaller than the sucker and then you get suckers on top of suckers. What you have to do is just get down close and personal with your plant and start analyzing, looking at the pieces of the plant to determine what's a sucker, what's a main stem, and then make the decision of whether a sucker becomes the main stem. There's no set rule. You're the one in control. I'll show you how I take care of this plant, but it's something that you just have to get in and do. And it's better to do while the plant is still relatively small because when it gets to the trellis, it's going to spread out. If I wait too long, a lot of these suckers that have become main stems might have to be cut out and damage the plant. So I want to deal with the plant while it's relatively small. So when I prune, I'm pruning out small suckers or small stems and letting the bigger ones grow. So now I'm going to start cleaning up this plant. And so because I've already identified this old sucker as the main stem, as I look at the original stem, it's got so much damage and it's been weakened so much by the hail that I'm just going to take it out. I look at the bottom of the plant and I'm going to start from the bottom and just work my way up taking out branches along the way. Now, here's another branch that was damaged by the hail. It's actually pretty weak and wobbly, so I'll take that out. It actually was a sucker. What's left behind is this leaf branch. Ultimately, I want to prune out all of the branches that are about 15 to 18 inches from the ground to clean up this plant. You can see that it's opening up a lot of space. There's another branch here at the bottom that was damaged by the hail. I cut that off. There's another branch that is actually growing pretty strong. So even though I like to prune most of the lower branches off, for now, I'm going to let this one grow. So we have a really strong one on the left and a really strong one on the right. And those will be the primary growing points. I've got a really low branch down here. I'm going to take that out. So the plant right now is going to be V-shaped. I've attached a tomato clip to the right side of the V. And as I look at it, there's another sucker just below the primary growing point. If I let this sucker grow, it's going to grow vertically and start to take over. I really want it to grow in that direction and form a V. So I'm going to take out this sucker. Now, smaller suckers, you can just pinch off with your thumb and finger. I like to get in with pruners. Now, right behind that sucker, there's a couple more leaves growing. These are potentially new suckers, so I will pinch those off. So why is the V important? Why am I stressing that I'm training this into two distinct stems? Well, this is the key to growing more in less space. This is a single plant with a single root system. 
This trellis gives me a lot of space to grow this plant, all of these plants. So while normally I don't like to start the V until about 18 inches above the ground, this one's a little bit lower, but it's okay. It's going to be two distinct growing stems until it gets to the trellis. And then once it hits the, the trellis, I'm going to let each of those stems branch out to two or four or more branches. And eventually it'll be like a fan covering this space. And the trellis will hold the branches off the ground. The plant's going to be less susceptible to disease and we're going to have a ton of tomatoes, all supported by this trellis, all managed by me determining where it's going to grow. Now, it's true that if you just let the plant grow with no pruning, you'll get a ton of tomatoes too. But the difference is that if it just sprawls, it takes over, it covers the ground, and it begins to interfere with other plants. And as you've already seen, there are suckers that grow within suckers, and some of those suckers can get quite large. So if we did nothing, this plant would have hundreds of suckers on it. And all of those suckers continue to grow. They'll set flower, they'll set fruit, but remember, this is a single plant with a single root system. And the roots may not be enough to support a plant with hundreds of branches growing all of those tomatoes. The tomatoes are probably going to be pretty small, even if they set. By controlling it, getting it off the ground, getting airflow, and then being able to manage fertilizer as necessary to the roots, we have great control over this plant and can grow pretty large fruit in large numbers. Using a tall and wide trellis like those tomatoes I just showed you is just one option. For years, I've been using these high hoops made out of cattle panels. And instead of pruning the tomatoes into a fan, like I will on that other trellis, these, I use the same basic concept. But now, it's more of a vase shape. So I'll start with the V, with two distinct branches. And then I'll let each of those grow more. So eventually, each of these tomatoes under these trellises will have multiple growing points. But it becomes a three-dimensional growth, all within the support of this trellis. Let me show you how I specifically pruned a few of these different plants. On this tomato plant, this is the main growing stem, and the main growing point got knocked off in a hailstorm. But this sucker that's growing between a side branch and the main stem is going strong. So what I'm actually going to do at this point is to trim off the main stem. And now this sucker will become the main stem. So I'll take a tomato clip, attach it to the twine, and then put it around what used to be a sucker, but now this stem will grow vertically. Here's a black crim that's doing pretty well, and I have the main stem set to grow up this twine right here with a tomato clip on it. But I'm looking over here and I see that I have a really nice sucker right here that I can use as a second branch. So what I'm going to do is put another piece of twine here and I've already tied it to the top. And then I can take another tomato clip and I can just attach the tomato clip to this sucker. This tomato starts as a bit of a mess. It's hard to figure out where the branches start and where the suckers end. So now it's time to do a little bit of pruning. Start by taking off a lot of these lower branches. 
that will improve circulation on the plant and also clean it up so I can see what I'm working with. There's a few dead branches from the hail. This sucker can grow into a completely different plant. I'm not ready for that right now. I will cut it off and set it to the side. Same with this one down here. Set it to the side. Take off some of these dead and dying lower branches. So now I can see the plant and I can see that there's a really good strong str sucker growing in this direction. There's a good sucker growing in this direction. And what used to be the main stem is actually not growing at all. This is as a result of the hail damage. So I'll just cut that off completely. Also some dead and dying branches here in the middle. The center looks like it lost its flowers. There's no reason to keep it in place. So I've cut this plant back dramatically. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a tomato clip on this sucker right here. And I'll put a tomato clip with a new piece of twine on this sucker right here. And I'll focus on these two primary growing points from this point forward. So these suckers that I pruned off can actually grow into another full-size tomato plant. So I'm gonna take this one Prune off some of these lower branches and then make a deep hole and stick it in. Press down the soil, cover it with mulch, I'll water it in and I expect this plant to grow. And I'll do the same thing on the other side with this nice sucker. The type of trellis you use isn't critical, but I prefer these cattle panel trellises because they're sturdy and strong. And when you think about this plant multiplying its branches and covering this space and being loaded with fruit, it's going to weigh a lot. So you do need a sturdy structure when you grow vertically. If you let them sprawl, there's nothing wrong with that. But Many of us that have tried that method find out that at the end of the season, there's tomatoes underneath the leaves that we never saw. By getting the plants off the ground, you'll be able to see all your fruit and harvest everything. And the plant gets sun from both sides. Vertical growing is definitely something you should try. And if you do it and you get to know your plants and the difference between branches and stems and suckers, guarantee you, you will become a better gardener. And to also help you on that journey, I suggest you watch one of these other videos. They'll help. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.